We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Internet, not the internet, sorry, the T's. What, what we're going to do in this session is just give you some insight into what is happening on the continent, uh, some of the challenges, some of the opportunities, uh, so, so, some, some of the, the, the successes you know, and, and, and where we feel you know, we, we're, we're moving forward. And yeah, you know, with, with, with this year and you know, this, this session is quite uh, uh, norm now of these hybrid uh, uh, workshops where the recent pandemic or the current pandemic has, has really changed the way we collaborate and, and communicate. And this, this highlights some of the, the infrastructure challenges that are faced and how we're, we're overcoming those. So I'm not going to take up any more of our time. I'm now going to hand the floor over to our chairperson of the FICTA, uh, Tabo, who's going to give a bit of an introduction into the FICTA and some opening remarks. And then we'll move into the formal part of our program. And towards the end, we want to open the floor for questions. Uh, any, not just questions, you know, any thoughts or interventions that anyone might have or any advice they would like to give us as, as an organization. So on that note, I'm handing the floor over to our chair, Tabo. Thank you, uh, uh, Paul, much appreciated. Uh, and I would like to take this opportunity to greet all. Uh, uh, my name is Tabo Mashikwane. Uh, I'm the chairperson of AFICTA. Uh, and and if, at, at the core of what we do uh, as AFICTA, uh, we actually are an advocacy group and uh, we are uh, facilitating uh, the realization of the digital dream for, for our stakeholders in Africa. So the issue being uh, uh, what we have identified that there is underrepresentation uh, of, of groupings in Africa when it comes to policy decision uh, making and also policy formulation. And hence, uh, we exist. We exist for for that. We exist to ensure that we, we put forth this this uh, dissenting voices of those who might be marginalized. And uh, 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 we, we 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 appreciate the time you have taken to come in into our workshop, workshop number one five eight, which is digital inclusivity uh, in de in developing in in developing and least developed countries. Uh, and, and our emphasis this year is on user connectivity and, and content. And as you have seen with the advent of us having moved into the hybrid mode of, of, of operation, a, a, a large component of, 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 of people who might not have been exposed uh, before to, to the digital environment, are now finding themselves at the center stage. And while they find themselves at the center stage, uh, work also and, and the creativity type of work uh, is, is actually uh, uh, have changed in how we disperse it to, 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 to uh, customers out there. Whether it is software, whether it is music, whether it is uh, content that has got to do with arts, 
you find that uh, the whole industry has changed. And it is very imperative that as we get ourselves geared up into uh, this new world of work and this new world of living and this new world of, a, a, a environment that is a, 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 in a hybrid and virtual environment that we actually a, a get ourselves to be to be ready and also to make sure that especially those who are a, a from developing and least developed countries they are actually taken a, along. A, a, a Paul, a, thank you a, for 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 giving me this platform. And I hope that you will actually uh, enjoy the session as we we move on with the discussions on 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 our on on the regions, uh, to hear what what are the experiences that are there, what are the challenges that are are, are being uh, experienced, and the, the opportunities thereof. I think what is very critical is for us to cross cross learn from each other and also to make sure that at the end of the day when we actually put it down in the policies they are well informed and they are in for, and, and 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 they've got everyone's voice being incorporated into them i would like to give back the uh, the podium to to you uh, uh, paul as the moderator and you can proceed thank you uh, thank you tabo and uh, as you can see you know the, the continent there's this massive uh, opportunity for business uh, in the ICT space. We, 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 we still have a few speakers that uh, have not quite managed to get in to the session. Um, doc, Dr. Mohamed Shaddeed, I don't, I don't see him online yet. Uh, Dr. Wadu, the gang. Wadu there, no. Uh, Ulandi. If you don't mind, if I move to you while we try and get our other speakers online. Uh, Alandi Exner is our Southern Africa Vice Chair for AFICTA. So if you can just give us uh, a, just a short introduction of yourself and then a, a bit of an overview of what's happening in the Southern African region. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, as Thank you for, for, for the brief introduction. Yes, as mentioned, I'm Elandi Exner. Um, I'm the Southern African uh, representative for, for FICTA. And um, I have got approximately over 20 years experience in ICT, but I'd, I'd rather spend uh, most of my time giving the feedback in terms of uh, what's happening in South Africa. And I think certainly, um, needless to say, the pandemic has had a major impact on all industries, um, including uh, the, the ICT sector. Uh, what we've seen also with the pandemic is uh, a host of new, new languages, of which I'm probably going to use some of them now, such as, can you hear me? Can you see me? You're on mute. Um, so so I, 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 I giggle because uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably, through, through all of the presentations, we'll probably be hearing a lot of that, um, as well as uh, some, uh, network connectivity challenges. Um, I think what, what certainly has, has been great in terms of, of the pandemic itself obviously has not been great, but it has been a catalyst in terms of um, driving change in, 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 uh, in my region. For example, I mean, for many, many years, we've been advocating uh, more, uh, more around digital, digitization, around uh, working from home, and um, you know it's always been on the agenda. We'll get to it. We'll get to it next year. Next year we don't have the budget for it. Uh, what are the drivers for it? And unfortunately, this is exactly what happened. COVID forced us to make those changes. Um, and it, it, it is unfortunately, uh, let me use one of those buzzwords. It is going to be the the, the new normal. Um, digital technologies has definitely become the critical enabler. We've seen that for many years, but more so now. Um, everyone is encouraged to work from home. We have no choice with, uh, with the, the, the lockdowns that were imposed on, on us um, at the beginning of the pandemic, as well as uh, um, right through the, 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 the pandemic. Um, we've seen an increase in um, food delivery services, which is great because it has, uh, uh, you know, other than the fact that a lot of businesses lost, um, were forced to close down, we've seen an emergence of new businesses um, such as uh, 
food delivery, um, not, not just from restaurants, but from uh, grocery, uh, logistics. Uh, there's been online uh, payments. So now it's not just a case of putting in your credit card and putting in your, your, um, your PIN number. Now we we've, we've, uh, actually have uh, contactless payments, which I know has been around in other countries for quite some time, but it's, it's uh, recently been adopted in South Africa. Remote learning has, has obviously increased as well because uh, children haven't been able to go to school, um, as well as entertainment. Um, I think our, our normal cinemas and um, movie theatres that we've seen in Mark, and we've seen an increase in our uh, digital platforms uh, such, as, such as Netflix, um, other platforms um, coming to the fore. Very quickly, I want to run through some of the telecommunications statistics, uh, which I uh, obtained from um, ICASA, which is South Africa's telecommunications regulator, uh, just to share some stats with you folk. Um, whilst the revenue has increased, uh, total te uh, telecommunication investment continues to decrease in 2020. Um, a decrease of 6%. And over a six year period, the total te telecommunication investment increased by 1.1%. So we've seen an increase um, over a six year period, but in the last year, there has been a decrease. In terms of the national population coverage for telecommunications, uh, we've seen that um, the 3G increased from 99.7% in 2019 to 99.8% in 2020. Uh, the national population's coverage for 4G and LTE increased from 92.8% in 2019 uh, to 96.4% in 2020. And the 5G population coverage is at 0.7% in 2020. So there is an increase, um, but probably not as much as we'd like. Uh, so we'll continue monitoring and watching that space. Um, as far as the rural population coverage is concerned, that's also always the, the challenge because of the vast um, uh, geographical span of, of, of South Africa. Uh, 2G and, D, uh, and, and 3G in terms of all our provinces are sitting at 99 to 100% coverage in 2020, while 5G is obviously still a major concern with no coverage in, in 2020. Um, and that is in our rural population. As far as our urban population centers are concerned, uh, 2G, uh, 3G, LTE, LTE and 5G, all the provinces are, are at about 99 to 100% coverage in 2020. Persons employed in the telecommunication sector, um, it's so important to know that there has been an increase um, by 1.6% in 2020, which is, which is great. Um, female employees, and I'm an advocate for women in ICT, uh, female employees uh, as a proportion of the total employment increased by 21.9% from 2019 to 2020. So very glad to see, to see those numbers increasing. And over a six year period, telecommunications sector total employment and female employment increased by 2.1% and 2.4%. And so um, some great statistics. Um, just uh, some final statistics before I touch on the regulatory and the policy landscape. Uh, Paul, if I am exceeding my time, please just, I um, can't see any hands, just uh, feel free to, to jump in and, and mute me if necessary. Um, so what I found, which was quite interesting, um, and especially having sharing the platform today with my colleagues um, in some of my neighboring countries, is the international um, speed test benchmarks. So the global speed test ranking for South Africa was at 90 in 2019, and we went up to 87 in 2020 for fixed broadband. Uh, the mobile broadband in 2019 was 60 and in 2020 was at 55. So that's um, comparing it to the Chinas and, and Russian and, 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 and some of those other countries. However, the speed test benchmark with, with neighboring countries. Um, so South Africa's speed test ranked for, uh, ranking for fixed broadband was at 87 is the highest when compared to other neighboring countries. So um, I just want to put this challenge out there for my neighboring countries, let's try and, try and beat that. 
And uh, South Africa is the highest ranked country amongst its neighbors for mobile uh, broadband with a ranking of 55 in 2020. As far as the regulatory and policy landscape is concerned, I'll touch very, very briefly in terms of what's happened in South Africa um, in the last 12 months. Um, we've had the enforcement implementation date of the 1st of July 2021, which was for the Protection of the Personal Information Act. Uh, we we um, fondly refer to it as PAPIA. Um, for those that are not familiar with PAPIA um, in, in the Europe, the, the equivalent would be the the GDPR and the PAPIA is also um, very much loosely based on, on the GDPR uh, requirements. Our information regulator um, is also in the process of auctioning, which is for us a very, a very high demand spectrum. Um, and we, we're hoping that uh, we're going to get some closure on that. This has been going on for, for a number of years and hopefully our Minister of Telecommunications and Digital Technologies um, will we'll finally bring, bring this uh, lengthy process to an end to make available uh, the spectrum which, which is in high demand. And lastly, um, in terms of our Cyber Crimes Act, something again that in terms of the bill uh, we've been working on for a number of years, uh, on the 26th of May 2021, the President signed the bill into law. Um, the President of South Africa has proclaimed the commencement date of certain sections of the Cyber Crimes Act to be the 1st of December 2021, um, and then the, the President may fix different dates for different provisions on the Act. So again, um, the Cyber Crimes Act did receive quite a, li quite a lot of um, negative reviews and a lot of, and, and, and a lot of um, kickback from, from industry, but I think we, we are in, in the right step in terms of addressing uh, cyber crimes uh, in South Africa. Um, and uh, time will only tell in terms of, uh, you know, how, how the enforcement and um, the regulatory uh, framework will, will assist in combating uh, the cyber crimes. Paul, at a very, very high level, this is what's happened um, in my region over the last 12 months. I hope it's uh, has, ho hope it has been insightful. Um, and the over back to, back, back to you, Paul. That, that, thank you, Alanda, for a very comprehensive review on, on uh, Southern Africa. Uh, I'm going to move over now to uh, our West Africa region, regional vice chair, uh, Tola Sobasa. Uh, Tola, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you, Paul. Uh, apologies, uh, the network is a bit bad. I'm not going to activate video. Um, okay, I hope I can be heard properly. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, all right. Okay, thank you. And it's been, uh, I, I must say, uh, the South African uh, analysis have been very interesting and encouraging, <laughs> apparently. Um, so we try our best. We can uh, play catch up uh, in the sub-region of West Africa. Of course, uh, when we talk about West Africa, we know uh, Nigeria play a big role in terms of uh, technology and personnel. Yeah. It's been a bit challenging. It's been a mixed bag. Uh, obviously, COVID had had a big impact on everything we do. It's a global affair anyway, but Nigeria and West Africa is not exclusive. Uh, we, we we can report that Cote d'Ivoire, we had some activities in Cote d'Ivoire, yeah, uh, where a couple of activities, which Afikta was part of, uh, were done in Abidjan. And we had a member of our uh, a FICTA board that was able to assist in, they used to have uh, a physical program, in-person program on cybersecurity and business network. But because of COVID, most of the activities were reduced to, uh, reduced to virtual. And the same thing applied in Nigeria. In Nigeria, uh, in the region, we had the quarterly virtual session, which was focused on cybersecurity. We had intervention from experts that made contribution on what had been happening across the member state of the region. Uh, I can say bulk, just like what Elena said, bulk of activities re revolved around learning, mostly. Most of activities revolve around learning and 
what everyone everyone we notice is uh, <clears throat> the, the the COVID experience, the pandemic had ensured that a lot of tech tech companies enabled virtual participation across different uh, platforms, and that made some new tech businesses to come up, which Africa will be glad to take advantage of because we have some new members, for example, that have emerged making use of virtual virtual platform for participation. I, I would like to take a pause and come back on one or two concrete uh, examples. If there is any intervention from another region, I would like to yield the floor while I come back with one or two uh, contribution later. Thank you, Paul. You are muted, Paul, can't hear you. I know, I, I know. I'm, try, I'm trying to unmute. <laughs> mute. I can't unmute. We can hear you, Paul. You're good. You un you successfully unmuted. We can hear you can now. You can go can ahead. You, hear, you can hear me. Okay. Okay. Weird. It, it still seems I'm on mute, but okay. So th 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 thanks, Tola. Uh, th thanks, Alandi. We we've got uh, some different perspective. We we we're still short of our next two speakers uh, who seem for technical challenges unable to connect. So whilst we're waiting for them to come on board, I don't, I don't, we, we could possibly open the floor for some questions. Uh, now for questions, you know, we, we can, someone can take the floor, they can request to take the floor through the hands up or post a question in the uh, chat and I can pose the question. Uh, sorry, the question sorry. can be posed. To, yes, sorry, Cody. Paul, um, we have Eric in the house. I think I can think he is also prepared to give us a speech. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we, 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 we have another one of our Pictable members on the call. Uh, Eric, can, can you give us a bit of your perspective, please? Eric, are you unable, are you able to un unmute? Would, would the host be able to unmute Eric? Uh, if uh, on a yo Cameroon pour déployer ça, bon, on est tombé d'accord que oui. c'est un produit qui est vital. Mm -hmm. Je vais leur faire signer euh, un MOU Eric, you're parce on. que Eric, Eric you're on. Eric, you're on. Eric, you're on. Eric, you're on. Mais c'est pas lui, Kemitel de Côte d'Ivoire qui va porter le projet. C'est Kemitel SA du Cameroon. Et je ne suis Eric. pas encore décidé si je okay, vais le faire Eric au Cameroon ou le Rwanda, call, par exemple. Maybe we can dispute Eric. Un qui est très favorable à l'innovation africaine pour les financements, c'est ça. C'est assez facile. Donc, euh... Would it be possible to mute Eric? Thank you. Okay, I, th I think Eric might be on, on a call right now. Uh, we, do, do you have any questions that uh, anyone would like to post? Hands up, chat. Melissa, may, may, maybe you could give something from uh, a business perspective. Yeah, sure. So can you hear me okay? We can hear you. All right, super. Let me turn off the light so it's not so bright. Um, my name is Melissa Sassi, and I, uh, I call myself the chief penguin of IBM Z. So I, I work in the IBM Z division of, uh, of IBM and I head up student and entrepreneur experience globally um, within the IBM Z division of IBM. Um, I work on a lot of enabling ecosystems. And what I mean by that is looking at, you know, our, our young people, looking at students um, and also early stage entrepreneurs and thinking about, you know, what are those skills those digital skills that our um, students and young people um, especially need to have to make meaningful use of the of the internet uh, across the continent and beyond. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, I've had a wonderful opportunity in um, kind of rolling out and creating is um, 
a um, series of, of, of talks and events and uh, platforms that um, look at those skills that are necessary for the, the future of, of work. And I, looked at, I look at that um, as, let's say, the, the trifecta of skills is kind of what I call it, um, Dr. Sassy's trifecta of skills, if you will. And it's across three different components. Um, the first component is digital skills and readiness. And I work from a, a framework that was recently, as of, um, as of uh, last year, endorsed by the IEEE. And it comes from, um, or the largest engineering organization on the planet. Uh, for those of you who are not um, familiar with IEEE, 400,000 uh, members worldwide, heavy population of people who are uh, members from both the research community, the student community, you know, private sector, et cetera. Um, and what we did is we evaluated, and this was kind of, uh, you know, incorporated into um, the research for my PhD around um, how do you um, evaluate, you know, what, what does it mean to make meaningful use of the internet and what are those ena enabling ecosystems? Um, the uh, digital skills framework comes from an organization out of Singapore called the DQ Institute, and it has eight components, um, and it includes things like safety and security. Um, it includes uh, uh, what we call digital literacy, um, which is, you know, coding, AI, machine learning, um, you know, data science. So what many people often, you know, think about when you say digital skills, and no, I'm not saying that everyone should be an engineer or a data scientist, but everyone, regardless of where you come from, whether you're from a, a local village in a Namibia or a large community of, of people, uh, a large city like Johannesburg, you should understand the basic building blocks of what computer science is and what it's all about. Um, the second component of those um, trifecta of skills includes what I call habitudes, um, which is a combination of habits and attitudes or what you might see referred to as professional development skills or the, the, the words that I, I personally despise, and that's soft skills, because we know they're not soft. They're, we know that they're super hard and they're, they're very difficult often. Um, the third component is um, entrepreneurial spirit. And I don't care whether you plan on becoming an entrepreneur or you never plan on becoming a CEO and founder of your own company. There are skills that you still need to have that are um, you know, relevant for an entrepreneur, meaning someone who is innovating and creating inside of someone else's company. I personally am both an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur. Um, I have my own nonprofit where we have taught tens of thousands of young people to code in, uh, in 12 countries. We have a, an IoT lab, a robotics lab, and a co-working space in North Africa, in Tunis, Tunisia, so sandwich in between. Algeria and um, and Libya. If I if I think about it, you know what I hear from students is where can I gain access to the skills? You know where can I gain access to, you know, free learning opportunities? Um, how do I go from student zero, meaning someone I've ne someone who's never been able to code before in their lives, to someone who um, has a defined learning journey that they can take? in their own capacity, maybe even outside of, you know, formal education. Um, I often hear from teachers, what are some of the learning journeys that I can incorporate into my classroom? Um, one of the, the places that I often send people to um, is one of the platforms that I manage called the IBM Z Global Student Hub. I'll put that in the, in the chat window for anyone who is uh, interested. And then on the entrepreneur front, I often hear a number of different things. You know, number one, you know, where can I gain access to, to funding? Where can I gain access to um, mentorship? Where can I gain access to credits to help me run my tech platform or my app? Um, because obviously as a, you know, early stage founder, um, you may not have revenue coming in or you may have an idea, but you haven't necessarily refined your idea. So how do you get your, your pitch down knowing that hey, you know what, I've got an idea. It can impact my local community. And I think in both sectors, we still have significant problems. So assume you've got access to the internet. Assume you've got access to affordable internet, which we know are, are both 
you know, very big challenges across the across the continent. But you know, once once you've got that, do you you know where do you get access to affordable devices, and then where do you get access to um, you know the right you know skills and network and um, you know advisors and sponsors who can help you move your your um, you know career or um, business forward. When I, I put on my entrepreneur experience hat, um, I also run a program that's called the IBM Hyperprotect Accelerator, where we have 100 startups, you know, in our program. Um, and big challenges for both when, you know, if you put on your hat as a woman or a, a girl, a female, um, we know that in the, um, you know, just in the U.S. alone, which is where I come from, um, even though I'm joining you from Poland today, by the way, it is very cold in Poland. For um, those of you who didn't make it here, it is snowing outside. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen snow before, I will tell you it is cold here. Um, but what I was going to say is that even in the United States and some of the developed um, countries, less than 3% of venture capital, so meaning uh, you know, uh, large companies or venture capitalists that are investing in startups, goes to female founders, less than 3%. Now, don't tell me that there aren't um, crews of amazing female entrepreneurs out there that are out innovating and creating local solutions in local languages, but are not um, able to access venture capital funds. This is one of the um, issues that I've been working on solving um, in my program, more than 50% of my startups have at least one female founder. The numbers are just as dismal for the black community, for the indigenous communities and other um, minorities. Um, within um, my program, we have at least 34% of our startups with at least one black founder. Um, you know, so again, that's uh, another important element that you know I'm focused on uh, resolving, and I have been focused on chiseling away at, you know, over the last year. On the student front, you know, gosh, um, if you look at students who are, you know, learning ICT skills and then going into formal formal employment, you know, 20, 30 percent of um, uh, the ITC or the ICT workforce is made up of women. So there's a lot of significant efforts that um, you know I'm undertaking and all of us must undertake together to continue to chisel away at making sure that the applications and services and solutions that are being built, not just by big tech companies like you know, IBM and others, you know, are appropriately taking into consideration the wants, the needs, the aspirations, and the pain points of you know females and others who are um, you know within local communities. So let this serve as a, a call to action for you know all of us to figure out what skills do we individually have that we can share forward um, to start to change some of these numbers on both the entrepreneur front and on the student front. Um, again, I'll put some links in the chat window for those of you who are interested in um, engaging uh, further or uh, interested in connecting um, you know, after this, uh, this session. Uh, back, over, um, back over to you. The, 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 thank you, Chief Penguin. <laughs> you, you should be fine in the cold. <laughs> Your natural habitat. I know I, I got the okay. right job title for it. That's for sure. Don't worry, I am inside. For those of you who see me uh, in a short sleeve shirt, I uh, when I'm outside, I'm definitely uh, covering my head and uh, snugly in uh, a scarf and uh, and uh, and gloves. Thank you very much. I I, I did see uh, Doctor Shadid join briefly. Uh, ah. There, there, there we are. Do, Dr. Shadid, th thank you for joining us. Uh, apologies for the complications with, with uh, the links and things this morning. Uh, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to pass the floor over to you uh, for just a short intervention on what's happening in uh, North Africa and uh, Egypt, your hometown, your home, home country. Thank you. Uh, we need, just need to unmute you first. Can we unmute Mohammed? Mohamed Shadid? Thank you. Fine. Okay, do you hear me now? Yes, we do. Thank you. Perfect. Good morning, everyone. Uh, here I am, Dr. Mohammed Shadid, 
I am uh, the executive director of Etisal. Etisal is an NGO with its membership in ICT community. I have five minutes to speak. I'll, I'll give you a brief account about what's happening in Egypt and what's happening in the region, if I have any information. Uh, Egypt is passing now through a very wide spread uh, digital transformation. First, since 2018, a campaign for digitizing all government services delivered to the citizens is now in digitization. There is a platform, different platforms for service delivery from all government departments to the citizens uh, in effect right now. Almost right now, about 95 different government service is delivered online. The online delivery can be either from mobile, from computer laptop, or from what we call digital centers over different malls where people can go come in, may, may, they may ask for uh, appointment, or they can go online there and do whatever service they want to have from the government. Issuing the birth certificates, uh, marriage certificate, divorce certificates, registering cars, uh, payment of uh, dues, payment of uh, government fees, anyway. For the second, the second axis, the online payment systems are very much encouraged. Using credit cards, debit cards, is very encouraged by the government and the banks. And they give incentives to people who are uh, ready to uh, issue new credit cards or debit cards to be used to pay and pay whatever service they need. In fact, this is the, the, the third line is uh, what you call smart cities. We are now establishing a new administrative capital. It is east of Cairo, 30 kilometers from Cairo. It's completely new capital. The government will be there. The parliament will be there. The presidency will be there. There will be the new administrative capital with all ministries and the government organizations there. Uh, this is one of two main smart cities established now in Egypt. Egypt is going towards uh, smart cities in the capital or another city in north of Egypt, uh, west of Alexandria, is about uh, 40 kilometers from Alexandria, so called Al Alamein. Uh, new new city. Now I would like. Can I share a presentation with you? One slide. Can I do that? Uh, yes, a uh, quick presentation. Yes, thank you. Okay, Dr. I will show you something. Uh, what Dr. Shadid is sharing, just a reminder, we can use the uh, chat to pose questions or the hands up, which is under reactions, I believe. Okay. The bottom of the screen. I'm just opening the file. Is it opening? We, we don't see it yet. Not yet, yes. Okay. By the way, unfortunately, I was thinking the session will start uh, 11.30 local time. I was shocked yeah, I think I, it started 10.30. Yeah, Something I, I happened. I think our time slot was moved. Okay. Yeah, the original time slot was changed. But I, did, I, I was not informed about that. Hmm. Okay.
Okay, Dr. Sleep, it's not showing yet. Maybe. No, can you oh, see okay. it? It's there. Yes, it's coming up. Yes, thank you. Okay, we, we okay. can see the screen. Uh, this is this is what's happening in Egypt. This is statistics for comparing what's happening in 2020 compared to 2019. As you may see, in from economic point of view, there is growth rate of 15.2 percent between uh, 2019 and 2020. The GDP from ICT is 93.6 billion. Egyptian pounds compared to 108 billion Egyptian pounds. By the way, the, the transfer rate between dollar and the, and the Egyptian currency is, uh, the dollar is about 16 Egyptian pounds, okay? Now, if you go to different parameters between internet capacity is increased 18.5%, uh, individual using internet, increased 10% from 47.6 million to 57.3. Fixed broadband subscriptions increased 19.1%. Mobile broadband subscription increased 8%. USB modem subscription increased 15% from 3.1 million to 3.58 million. The, the increase is due to the fact that now the whole infrastructure of the country is exchanged from copper wiring that was used in the past to fiber optic network over all the capital of Cairo. This is the numbers that, that shows how Egypt is proceeding in ICT and technology. Uh, one more point, payment facilities on the banks and using online payment platforms and mobile applications is quite encouraged by the, by the all banks and the government itself. Uh, I don't know if I have any question to answer now. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Uh, th there's no questions at the moment. We, we'll open the floor shortly to questions. Uh, uh, in fact, we, we are in Egypt, we are cooperating uh, extensively with different African countries, we established an organization, organization called the AFICTA, African ICT Association. It was established in 2012, and we are uh, partnering with them in empowering the, the concept of digital Africa. Okay. Thank you, doctor. So now now we've had uh, some different perspectives. I don't know if Eric is ready to speak now. Uh, Eric, would you like to take the floor for five minutes? If if not, uh, I I can open up the floor for questions. I, I, would Would anyone like to pose a question? I, I know we're the early morning slot for those that are in Katowice. Uh, uh, Okay, so that, 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 let me just uh, also have a small chat. What, what, what you can see is uh, on the continent, you know, the fourth industrial revolution is here. It, it's real, it, it's happening. You know, our governments are setting up a fourth, fourth industrial revolution uh, task force. Uh, there's a lot of work being uh, done to look at uh, the gaps and to try and align legislation and policy that uh, creates an environment where our citizens can connect, our businesses can connect, and that uh, we can leverage technology uh, better as, as a tool for change. Uh, you, you've heard about uh, e-commerce, the boom of e-commerce. You know, th this, this came about uh, through the uh, pandemic. Uh, you know, th th it's, th the pandemic was bad. Uh, the only good that's come out of the pandemic is it's uh, put uh, technology to the forefront. You know, our kids, need access to uh, internet to great access these e-learning tools. We, we've had a ton of e-learning tools evolve over, over, over the past uh, year. Digital payments, massive move forward and shift. 
in digital payment. And in many ways, you know, the African continent is, is, is a, a leader when it comes to the use of digital payment. You know, we've seen this in East Africa with M-Pesa. Uh, we've seen uh, the mobile phone being used as a, a payment tool. And this is due to low levels of uh, financial inclusion into the traditional banking systems. And the banks are changing, you know, on the continent. The banks are starting to close uh, the bricks and mortar uh, branches and, and move towards uh, digital payments. That, that doesn't say that, uh, you know, there's not challenges. You know, we, we, we've got uh, digital inequality on the continent that is led by uh, the inability for many of our citizens to access uh, technology due to affordability and accessibility uh, issues. So, you know, finding a technology that can address uh, those uh, lower income uh, citizens and, and make sure that everyone is, has equitable, equitable access to, to the benefits, you know, that uh, technology ICTs, the fourth industrial revolution is, 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 is uh, supposed to bring. Uh, you know, I, I saw an interesting discussion group in one of our local discussion groups this morning where someone's asking, you know, why, why don't we have a, a digital COVID uh, passport in, in, in Namibia? You know, and, and the reason is, is because 50% of our population don't have access to smartphones or they, 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 don't, they can't afford the data to, to use a smartphone. So, you know, we're, we're still paper driven and it's not a technology problem. You know, we, we have the technology available to us. So we, we need to bridge these, uh, build these last mile bridges. And it's not to say it's not happening. You know, it, it is happening. And the, the, these, the, this is where there's just massive opportunity for the, the, the ICT sector and business uh, on the continent around uh, building those uh, digital highways, which are being built, you know, fiber, is moving out of the cities. Fiber is moving towards uh, the village, but the, the countries are vast. You know, there's vast areas that, that need to be covered. So the middle mile, you know, is being built as, as we speak. Um, so from a Victor's perspective, you know, our, our, our drive is, is to align the, uh, the ICT professionals, the, the, the ICT businesses, academia, government, to help drive uh, the right policy that can shape the right narrative and create uh, the right environment for African ICT uh, sector to, to thrive. And th this, this is not about uh, just being a consumer, you know, it's about Africa being a producer of uh, global international property and being an incubator for building the, the, those next uh, uh, tech uh, innovations that would help drive other parts of the world forward as well. So, you know, the, the knowledge is here, the skill is here. It, it, all, everything we need to, to succeed uh, is here. Uh, we just need to, to strengthen that collaborative framework, work with our uh, partners and expand our partnership. And you know, th this, this part of our session is as an outreach for a FICTA. And it's an outreach to, to you. It's an outreach to uh, other partners that uh, couldn't join us, but we'll read this transcript later. That, you know, Africa is open for business. Af Africa is moving forward. And a FICTA is a body that can help bring the stakeholders together and drive the right uh, digital narrative uh, to enable, you know, what we want to enable on the continent. So I, I, I don't know if anyone has any questions. We have, we, we, the floor is still open for questions, interventions, thoughts. Uh, Alandi, I see your hand is up. I'll give the floor to you. Thank you, Paul. Um, th thank you for uh, that, uh, some of your views there, and it certainly resonates with me. Um, what, I, what I'd also like to, to, to challenge um, the, the members on, on, on this platform is, you know, we, we talk about artificial intelligence or we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution. Um, and in there, we've got, you know, big data and artificial intelligence and robotics and, and the likes. But something which I think we, we don't talk enough about, and today is, is not the platform for that, but certainly I'd like us to start thinking about that. And if it is being done, great. If not, we need to start talking about it is the ethics 
around um, the instruments around fourth industrial revolution, um, have the discussions around ethics. And it's not just around the regulatory framework and where does regulation fit in, but ethics uh, as, as a core component. I'll, I'll give you a very um, simple example of what's happening in South Africa at the moment. Um, and one has to ask the question whether, um, you know, you could, you could be ethical, um, but is it, you could be, it's lawful, but unethical, um, totally unrelated to ICT, but just to, to, to get the creative juices going is in South Africa, um, one of the um, petroleum uh, organizations is doing uh, blasting in, in our oceans. Um, and they have a court order in which they can do that. So by law, they're allowed to do that. Is it ethically okay that they're destroying our oceans? So I know this is not the platform to discuss, uh, uh, the, you know, Greenpeace and, and, and what everybody feels about it. But from an ethical perspective, I'd like us at, at some stage to have the discussions that we as um, ICT practitioners and professionals, our duty of care in terms of, um, you know, perhaps combining regulatory framework with, with the, uh, the, the discussions around ethics. Um, but uh, Paul, I, I just wanted to throw that out there. And if anyone also has any any comments or contributions, I'm happy to to hear what they are. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Alandi. Any any other thoughts from from our team, from those that uh, joined us this morning? As I say, I think we're one of the first sessions, the breakfast session. I, I I'd like to also recognise our former chair, Osam Algamal, that's also joined us for this session. Osam, do you have a couple of words you'd like to share with us? Thank you very much, Paul. And uh, always appreciating uh, the stamina and enthusiasm and the participation of all participants. Um, from my end, just uh, first of all, the word ICT does no longer mean probably information communication technology, but more of innovation and communication technology. The, uh, the, the fourth industrial revolution is uh, reshaping a lot of the technology involvement that we are talking about. And in fact, some of this involvement might not need that much uh, strong uh, spread infrastructure, but more concise one, uh, if you are talking about uh, um, precision agriculture, for example, uh, the farm would need only the solution for the farm. It might not need the connectivity up to uh, uh, the main uh, so, um, the main internet, but still it needs a lot of innovation and uh, basically whether smart agriculture, uh, smart industry, um, uh, smart infrastructure, all of that would need, first of all, uh, creating proper awareness. And this is exactly what you are doing here, but more needs to be done certainly in Africa to recognize the, the return on investment on such important uh, in, uh, innovation and communication technology. Uh, what is good about using the fourth industrial revolution is that we can really calculate and evaluate the amount of return on investment that can be uh, uh, done in different sectors. Uh, this brings along additional challenges uh, related to regulation, related to um, uh, uh, capacity building, uh, not just to infrastructure investment, but more on people side. And so I, I, I would really recommend and uh, ask that we uh, find ways to uh, share best practices, again, between different countries, especially South to South, that we uh, have more awareness uh, um, programs related to how to implement the fourth industrial revolution uh, so we, we are not left behind, related to how we secure the solutions that we are going to implement uh, and how this really achieves uh, a better uh, return on investment for everyone and certainly a better uh, uh, national uh, domestic growth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hossam. 
Okay, we're, we're at the final minute or two of our session. I just want to hand the floor to Tabo if he's still available. But just for a last word, Tabo, are you able to just give a last word in closing? Thank you. Much appreciated uh, to the panelists and uh, thanks uh, uh, Paul for moderating uh, this session. And I think uh, it actually uh, shows the wealth of, of uh, uh, information that we've got amongst ourselves and especially when it comes to collaboration. Uh, uh, collaboration is very key as you could have uh, observed uh, uh, given uh, all the reports from all the, the regions that they are a different and myriad uh, innovations that have happened over the past year just to uh, catapult every region from where it used to be to a, a better stance. And I, I think what is a very uh, a critical is, is that cross uh, uh, sharing to actually uh, now and again to say if this type of a solution worked for Egypt, uh, will it work for, for Tanzania as an example? Uh, will a, a particular uh, a solution that has, has, has been done in Nigeria, will that particular type of a solution be shared uh, uh, to Cote d'Ivoire as an example? And it's very uh, 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 critical that uh, as we, we, we move along in this digital uh, journey, we do not uh, leave others behind. Those who are a little bit ahead uh, ought to 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 do to do that, and I, I, uh, thanks Hossam for for gracing us, and thanks uh, for uh, others who have come through into this session. Uh, this is our day zero, and I think in two days' time we'll be uh, going to the main event. Uh, if you can actually uh, uh, join us again when you've got a uh, time, uh, we, we we will uh, appreciate that. Uh, much appreciated. Thank thanks, uh, Paul. Thank you. Okay, Th thank you, Tabith. Then this draws our session to an end. And once again, thank you for all joining us and I wish everyone a successful IGF and hopefully we'll see you at our uh, main workshop session. Thank you and goodbye.